Yes, people, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you guys are all doing well. So in this video, we will be looking at the latest news surrounding Scott McTominay and Jaden Sancho's future. It looks like we may finally have that deal done for Scott McTominay to leave Manchester United and join Napoli. And it looks like there could be an option for Jaden Sancho as well. Will Manchester United get rid of these players before the window closes and be able to bring in Manuel Ugarte and maybe a few more as well. We'll also be looking at the reaction to Manchester United's first defeat of the season in only our second game of the season. Yes, it's come already. It's got me feeling like we should continue exit without saving and all that on football manager kind of stuff. Oh, can we start the season again already? I can't believe I already feel like this. Yes, Manchester United losing against Brighton after a game where, after the first half, I know we fell behind, but I thought our performance was pretty impressive. We were pressing well. We were trying to create chances. We were getting our better players on the ball. Our defensive looked quite good. Um, you looked at the likes of Kabi Maino, who I thought was, was, was in his best form in the first half, faded away a little bit in the second half. Bruno Fernandes looked solid. You know, there were some great movements there. You even look at the goal, uh, the movement for the goal that stood, um, the Ahmad Diallo goal. Some of that possession-based play was absolutely fantastic. But still, some of those old frailties come to bear, come to fruition. Manchester United not defending the back post. Everyone goes to the front post. We'll talk about that later as well. Um, and Man United concede, concede a goal that's eventually the winner for Brighton. Um, having scored that goal that we thought was going to be the winner for us through Alejandro Garnacho, it was rightly ruled out in the end. Right decision is offside, Joshua Zerxi. But so, so harsh and it's so unfortunate as well. Joshua Zerxi trying to get onto Bruno Fernandez's pass, um, which eventually got to Garnacho. Garnacho fires it in on goal. And Zerxi, who was already sliding in to try and meet Bruno's cross, is still sliding in and eventually. He sticks it into the back of the net on the goal line and it can't stand because he was in an offside position. And I don't know about Usla. I remember watching it thinking, oh, Bruno's onside. Oh, Garnacho's onside. Goal. Sitting back, relaxing and then thinking, oh, shit. No, look at that. Joshua Zerxi. And Zerxi knew all along. He knew all along. He was the only one of the Manchester United players not to celebrate. He knew he was in an offside position and eventually that will get ruled out. And whilst it feels harsh, and it's got into Manchester United fans, and I'm still thinking about it today. It was the correct decision by the referees. Um, but Manchester United, we should have at least got out there with a draw. And you did feel like, because of those old frailties, those old mental weaknesses, that old kind of like, we're a very emotional side. And once we didn't keep that goal, once you know we saw, we saw Garnacho score, it get ruled out through Xerxes offside, my head went as a Manchester United fan and I feel like the players' heads went. Some of the players' heads, I don't think Garnacho really had an influence in the game after that. Xerxes didn't have an influence in the game after that. I think our attacking players' heads kind of went. I think Ahmad Diallo, who's had a difficult week um, with a bereavement in the family, hats off to him for his performance and scoring a goal and everything. I think his legs went towards the end of the game as well. Kabi Maino as well. So you're seeing some players that aren't fully fit yet for 90 minutes. Taking off Bruno Fernandes for me was a baffling one. Now, there's times when Bruno Fernandes should get taken off. There's times where I'm not saying Bruno Fernandes can't be substituted. You can substitute Bruno Fernandes. It's absolutely fine. But in that instance, I thought it was the wrong decision. First half, Mason Mount and Bruno Fernandes were leading our press. They're both very similar and they're both very good in terms of pressing. And our press against Fulham... And against um, Brighton was a lot better with both of them on the pitch. Mason Mount had to go off the pitch at half time for an injury or a potential, you know, a potential knock or something that they were looking at um, a little bit carefully. So he had to go off, and then we take Bruno off, and we lose everything that was good about us in that first half. Everything. Also, you're taking Bruno Fernandez off, who can create a goal or, or, or score a goal, and you see his face when he was taken off. He was a little bit baffled by it. I was baffled by it as well, and I wouldn't be surprised if the team were. It was the manager's well within his right to make substitutions, of course he is, and he's going to get them wrong sometimes, just as he'll get them right on other times, you know. But the decision to take Bruno off for Scott McTominay of all players as well was real, real baffling to me. We need to get over it. We need to get three points against Liverpool. If we can go out there and beat Liverpool next weekend, six points out of the three games, 
you know, if you were to draw at Brighton and draw against Liverpool, it'd be five points. It'd be better than that. And I know I'm already looking for these, 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 these little comforts wherever I can find them, but we really need to go out there and beat Liverpool um, next weekend now to just kind of erase this and get this bit out of our feeling because going into the start of a campaign with this feeling isn't the one. Ten Hag spoke after the game and he said it was very disappointing, especially for when, when for long parts of the game you have control. We were controlling the game in possession, doing so well and then conceded two unnecessary goals. Very, very avoidable. The first goal as well should have been dealt with by Harry Maguire. And that's why I'm saying, look, I think Harry Maguire was excellent against Fulham. But I was still saying, start delete against Brighton. Start your best players. Don't worry about, you know, yes, Maguire's in good form, but he can come in when we need him. Start your best players. We haven't bought Delit to be back up to Maguire. Start your best players. Um, and, and we started Maguire. I don't think that will be the case or should be the case against Liverpool. I'll be going to Leicester and, of course, Delit at the back. Um, I thought Masrawi's had a decent start to life at Manchester United at right back, crying out for a left back. You saw that the old goal, the low went missing. Um, and I think he's a good option there at times, um, especially when everyone else is injured, like Luke Shaw going away for England and getting injured. But we do, we do need that natural left back, don't we? Um, let's look at some stories that are popping off at the moment as well. Um, we hear the Napoli hope to reach an agreement. This came from Fabrizio Romano. Hope to reach an agreement with Manchester United for Scott McTominay after a £25 million bid was rejected. And then we heard from reports based out in Italy in Matino di Napoli via Sport Witness. Now, said Napoli's offer of 25 million euros for Scott McTominay appears to have been accepted. The player has agreed a four year contract with the Italian club. So it looks like we're getting closer to a deal. Now, it looks like, according to some more reliable people, the 25 million euro bid was rejected. But those based in Napoli may believe the deal's done or close to an agreement because the clubs have basically said, look, we've got a few million to sort out here. Let's meet over the table and get this deal done. I think it'll eventually happen. I think it's the right move. I think we possibly could have sold him last summer, although he did score a few crucial goals for us last season. Um, we could have got rid of him last summer. He's got a year left on his deal. I know they've got the extension, which we can trigger, but I'm sure I've heard some weird things that if you trigger the extension and the percentage of the fee in the future goes to the player and all that. Man United need to be avoiding that. Now, Scott McTominay, you know, he's been a useful squad player for Manchester United over the years, but not good enough for a team that wants to be winning the league. Not good enough if he should be starting week in, week out. And like we saw yesterday, coming off the bench, not good enough. Just not good enough. Get rid of him, move on. I think he'll have a good career out in Italy as well. We've seen the likes of Ruben Loftus-Cheek and Cole go over there. I think Loftus-Cheek has got more to his game. But Scott McTominay can go over there and do the same and have a very good career living in Naples. You know, it'd be nice for him. I'll never forget that goal. He scored some crucial goals for United, but I'll never forget that goal he scored against Man City to the 2-0 just before COVID. I remember standing on my chair celebrating, looking around, thinking, wow, we won't experience this for a while. Um, and we didn't. We went into lockdown, and that was a great, great moment. But it's time for Scott McTominay to leave. And it looks like that deal to Napoli is close to being done. Someone else that could be heading to Italy as well. Uh, we hear from Dimarzio, Juventus are continuing to work on a deal for Jadon Sancho. Talks are ongoing with MUFC uh, for a loan. His salary is an obstacle, but various options are being explored. So it looks like Sancho could also be leaving before the window closes this week. I think it closes on Friday, so we'll have any updates that are going on. We expect the man while well, we've got a deal to get done between now and then. And hopefully we can bring in someone else as well. Could we possibly snag a striker? Could we possibly get a left back? You know, if we can get rid of these two players, bring in some money, it's pure profit for Scott McTominay, then who knows, maybe we can squeeze a few more deals out of this, out of this window. I think the deals so far have been good, uh, but we still need to address a few positions. I'm gutted from yesterday. I don't think this will leave me until if, when we beat Liverpool. Um, and if we lose against Liverpool, then I can only imagine what kind of talk's been going to be going on. Oh, it's going to be horrible. <sighs> Welcome to the new season. Anyway, make sure you're keeping it locked. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Make sure you get your thoughts in the comments below. Hit that subscribe button as well. I'll be back very, very soon. But until then, see you in a bit.